The Outer Banks of North Carolina offers a wealth of activities for visitors and locals alike. Whether kiteboarding or jet skiing, fishing or sailing, or simply relaxing on the beach, there are any number of things to do all year round for everyone to enjoy. We hope visitors leave with fond memories of their beach vacation, but sometimes the weather doesn't cooperate, particularly when the area is threatened by a hurricane. Hello, I'm John Taller with the town of Kill Devil Hills, and I want to talk to you for a few minutes about hurricane preparedness and hurricane safety, in particular as it applies to visitors and residents of the Outer Banks. Hurricane season in the North Atlantic Ocean typically occurs from June 1st to November 30th, sharply peaking from late August through September. Unlike many natural disasters, such as earthquakes and tornadoes, there is often warning before hurricanes strike, but that doesn't mean you should wait until the last minute to prepare for a hurricane. When extreme weather threatens the Outer Banks, a countywide response is coordinated from the Dare County Emergency Operations Center. When the predicted track of a hurricane includes Dare County, a hurricane watch is issued. A hurricane watch means there's a real possibility of a hurricane coming to our area. Steps we recommend you take when a hurricane watch is issued include fueling your vehicles, securing outside items such as your deck or lawn furniture, and moving your refuse and recycled containers to a protected area away from the road. A hurricane warning means a hurricane is expected to strike the area within 24 hours. When a hurricane warning is issued, it's time to put up the storm shutters and board the windows. Boat owners should consider filling boats on trailers with water and lashing them to the trailer, then anchoring the trailer to the ground. Anything around your house or in the yard that can be blown away should be secured in a safer location. Hurricane watches and warnings do not require residents and visitors to leave Dare County. However, a mandatory evacuation is issued when storm conditions are projected to cause the interruption of public safety response, loss of utilities, closure of roads from high winds or water, and threaten the safety of the population in the path of the storm. John Gates is a sergeant with the Kill Devil Hills Fire Department and has been through numerous extreme weather emergencies. Sergeant Gates, can you talk to us about some of the things that you should bring with you during an evacuation? Thanks, John. In a worst case scenario hurricane, it may cause widespread destruction and prevent anyone from returning for several days. Roads may be clear, but getting power and water and other essential services restored may take longer. For visitors, the checklist is simple. Take everything with you that you came with. As far as residents are concerned, we suggest taking at least two weeks supply of prescription medications, clothing sufficient for an extended absence, and anything your children and pets may need. Finally, it's a good idea to let friends and family know when you are leaving and where you're going to be staying. Sergeant Gates, are there any shelters within Dare County that people can go to during a weather emergency? There are no shelters in Killeva Hills or Dare County. Circumstances will dictate shelter locations and their availability in other areas. Williamston, Rocky Mount, Roanoke Rapids, Kinston, and Greenville are all nearby cities with Red Cross approved shelters. Opening of all the shelters will be broadcast once the mandatory evacuation is announced. Anyone can go to a shelter, however pets are not allowed in any Red Cross shelter. Thanks, Sergeant Gates. Any other evacuation tips that you'd like to share? Sure, just a few final thoughts. Before leaving, turn off the main power supply to your home by flipping the main breaker switch in the panel box. If you have gas or other fuel lines running into your home, turn them off at the source. Thanks, Sergeant Gates. Another concern during evacuations is what to do with family pets. As Sergeant Gates mentioned, pets are not allowed in Red Cross shelters. For information about pets, we go to Kill Devil Hills Animal Control Officer, Louis Reber. Officer Reber, what special considerations should people make concerning their pets during a hurricane evacuation? Thanks, John. First thing, you really shouldn't leave your pets behind unless you really have no other choice. Um, you'll want to have a collar, leash, for each animal and some proof of ownership in case you and your pet are separated. So with packing, being in the car, and going to unfamiliar locations, pets are going to be under a lot of stress during an evacuation. So if you can afford to purchase a pet carrier, it's a good investment. It will keep them confined while you carry out your business. You will also want to have your pet's shots up to date and a current health certificate in case you have to board your pet. Officer Reber, unfortunately there will be times when people have no choice but to leave their pets behind. What should people do in those situations? Yes, unfortunately that sometimes happens. If you do have to leave a pet, do not leave it outside to face extreme weather conditions. These are domesticated pets and they do not have the same survival instincts as a wild animal. 
Your pet may face threats from wild animals, not to mention down power lines, flooding, and contaminated water. Prepare a place indoors where there is tile or vinyl flooring, like a bathroom or utility room. Leave at least three to five days of food and water. Access to water is the most important thing. Dogs and cats can survive days, even weeks or more, without food, but dehydration can kill within a couple of days. Also, it's better to place a pet in an area where they will be above potential flooding. And Officer Reber, what should people do if their pet is lost during a storm? If you lose your animal and you live in a town of Kildova Hills, you should check the Kildova Hills Animal Shelter. That number is 252-480-4047. You may also want to check at the Dare County Animal Shelter. That number, 252-475-5620. Depending on the severity of the storm damage, there may be no emergency service for a time and nobody to respond to animal-related calls. This is one of the important reasons we recommend that people leave when a mandatory evacuation is issued and take their pets with them when they go. Thanks, Officer Reber. So what can you expect in the aftermath of a hurricane? Depending on the severity of the storm or the disaster, the local situation could be quite unpleasant. Some of the more adverse conditions might include contaminated water, limited communication services, no electricity, severe erosion to shoreline properties, septic systems backed up, downed tree limbs, damaged homes and businesses, and roadways obstructed by standing water and debris. I want to emphasize how dangerous down power lines and contaminated water are. Live lines don't crackle and spark, even though they're still electrified, and water conducts electricity. As far as contaminated water goes, even brushing your teeth or washing your dishes with dirty water is risky. Understandably, residents and property owners are eager to return after a hurricane has passed to begin cleanup and repairs. To discuss reentry procedures, Greg Loy with the Kill Devil Hills Planning Department joins us. Greg, what is the process for allowing people back on the Outer Banks after the danger of a hurricane has passed? Thanks, John. As you said, people want to get back to their homes and businesses, survey the damage, and start fixing things up. Dare County uses a staged reentry process when the danger has passed to facilitate an orderly reentry. The 2008-2009 reentry passes issued by Dare County Emergency Management in 2008 will remain valid for 2011. No new reentry permits will be issued this year. All Dare County residents and property owners will be allowed reentry with proper identification, such as a valid driver's license with a local address. Out of town owners should bring a recent tax receipt in their name along with a photo ID. Now, in the event of a hurricane resulting in significant damage, reentry will be done in stages. Priority one will be essential personnel such as police, firefighters, medical professionals damage assessment teams, and other response personnel. Priority two will be critical businesses, essential personnel, and permanent residents. Priority three will be non-resident property owners and non-resident employees of non-critical businesses. Priority four will include the general public and visitors. So Greg, firefighters, police officers, and other first responders may have to evacuate as well? That's right. If a particularly strong storm threatens Dare County, even emergency personnel are required to evacuate. That means nobody will be left to help you if you stay behind, and that's why we encourage everyone to leave when a mandatory evacuation is issued. Any other steps people should take before evacuating or before coming back to the area? Make sure you have cash on hand in addition to all your checkbooks and credit cards when you leave. If you use electronics like cell phones and PDAs, don't forget the chargers. You want to minimize the amount of things you have to haul around and keep track of. If you have important documents such as insurance policies, bank or other financial records that you can save electronically, take copies on a flash drive or save them online. Things you can't copy like passports or original birth certificates take with you. Thanks, Greg. So what's it really like to experience a monster hurricane? Rochelle Brinkley is a detective with the Kill Devil Hills Police Department, but in 2005 she was working as an investigator with the Washington Parish Sheriff's Office in Louisiana, just an hour north of New Orleans. The eye of Hurricane Katrina passed through Washington Parish, packing winds over 100 miles per hour, and earlier Detective Brinkley shared some of that experience with me. I lived in Washington Parish um, in a little town called Angie, and I lived in a hundred-year-old farmhouse and not really close to water 
I mean, we had a river that was, was nearby, but not where the Gulf of Mexico actually came in. But the eye of the storm did pass right, right over Bugalusa. So Rochelle, do you think that you were prepared for Katrina? No, not at all. I was not prepared because I didn't believe what they were telling me was about to happen. And I thought it was just gonna be a big rainstorm and that they were over exaggerating what was, um, what was indeed coming our way. What was the most unexpected aspect of Katrina? I wasn't expecting to uh, not have help come. We didn't have communications for days and I was not anticipating the trees that were gonna be down in houses and roofs that were blown off and um, the canals and that were flooding over the roadways, um, not having chainsaws to get these trees out of the way. And How strong were the winds that you experienced? They were over 100 miles an hour. Um, I actually was in my house with my son who was about five years old at the time. We went to an inner corridor of the house and shut doors. But occasionally I would peek out the front door and I would see trees bend completely down to the ground and back like up again. Like flat on the ground? Like would bend down, touch, and come back up. Being in emergency services uh, there in Louisiana, how was the impact of Katrina on you guys' ability to respond to people who needed help? Could they even call someone if they needed help? Couldn't call. Cell phones didn't work. People were driving many, many hours because the traffic was backed up just to get gasoline to operate their generators. So locally, no gas? No gas. No electricity. No electricity. No, phone, no water. Anything. Food was, you know, not going to be refrigerated. Mm -hmm. Nursing homes that older people are in, they didn't have the things that they needed. And all these people were coming to us crying and begging and pleading. I, I almost felt like a bomb hit, like it was the end of the world. It really did. Mm -hmm. People were, were fighting over ice in lines uh, to just keep their food cool. You know, babies were overheated because the temperatures were just soaring. If I could have left, I would have. But I, I was in a situation with my job that I just couldn't. So for people that can leave, leave. There's no reason to stay. You're not missing anything. And you don't want to be in a house when the roof blows off or a tree crashes through it. There, there aren't going to be hospitals functioning um, to, to help you. So where will your family be when disaster strikes? What will you do if basic services such as water, electricity, and telephones are cut off? I want to close by sharing a few important tips about pre-planning for hurricanes that can help take some of the last-minute guesswork out of responding to extraordinary conditions. Before hurricane season, find out if your home is subject to flooding. Make an evacuation plan with your family. This includes knowing where you will go and the route you will take to get there. Have a fallback evacuation point in case the first one becomes unfeasible. Check your emergency equipment and have batteries on hand for flashlights and radios. Stock your pantry with enough non-perishable foods for three days per person. And have supplies on hand to board up your windows and doors with plywood. There is one final important step everyone should take to prepare for any kind of disaster, be it hurricane, fire, flood, or other calamity. Inventory and photograph structures, vehicles, and personal belongings, including serial numbers when possible. And keep those records in a safe place, preferably away from your home. One simple trick is to email a copy of these items to yourself. Having this information will be important if you must make an insurance claim. The only thing worse than being caught in a hurricane or other disaster is being caught unprepared. We hope this information has been helpful. On behalf of the town of Kill Devil Hills, I'm John Towler with the Kill Devil Hills Police Department.